Yeah, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Leia and today I am going to interview Mr. Gordon McKisson. I'm in his office right now in the Maggette and he is going to share with you a lot of tips or especially when it comes to construction. Yeah, Can you introduce check. yourself first? Like, I, uh, what do you do here and how long have you been here in the Philippines? Sure. Um, I'm Gordon McKissick. Um, I've been in the Philippines about uh, 10 years now. Um, when I first came here, um, I came because I met my wife-to-be and, and we fell in love and I decided to move everything and, and come live in the Philippines and I don't regret it at all. Um, I have, I'm Canadian and I never want to see another Canadian winter. It's as simple as that. If I never see snow again, um, I'll, be, uh, I'll die happy. We started off in the real estate business um, and then um, as that um, we got some success in the real estate business and Shirley and of course you know as a licensed broker mm -hmm. um, we ran in started running into a lot of clients that she was selling property to that wanted um, us to um, um, refer them to a builder oh. and uh, I made mistakes saying I'll do that <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Um, and I've been in the construction business all my life in Canada and, and uh, honestly I had no desire or no plans to be in the construction business here. I see. Um, but I figured we'd just do one or two houses and, mm -hmm. and one or two turned into 20 which turned into 50 which turned into 100. So wow. um, it's, it's challenging, the construction industry here is challenging and um, there's, there's definitely um, you know, we run into a lot of people like myself who said I've been in construction all my life, and, and so I'll, 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 I, I, I can do it here in the Philippines. Um, there's a there's a learning curve, a really steep learning curve that um, can can shock you. Um, it certainly shocked me. Um, so we've been in business here now for close to ten years. Ten and, years, wow. yeah. That's really long. Yeah, it is, and. Um, through some ups and downs, the uh, mm -hmm. pandemic was extremely hard for us. Yes. Um, we survived it and are, are um, getting stronger again every day. Um, but that was certainly a, a very difficult, challenging time for us. Mm -hmm. um, so there, there are certain things that are different here in, in building in the Philippines and you'll face um, you know, building in Western countries like where I'm from, Canada or mm. the U.S. or Europe, and, yeah. and maybe I can give you some some tips on what to expect and what to yeah. avoid. Yeah, I so. bet there are like uh, big differences between you know the international standard, your standard, and the Philippine standard. So can you just at least like give me at least two biggest challenges uh, when you are doing the construction here in the Philippines? Talk okay. Two biggest challenges is one is the work culture. Um, mm. it, 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 it's something that um, uh, I was totally um, um, not ready for. Um, yeah, it, it, you know, it, it's it's one thing where we come from. You you expect a certain standard of of work ethics, let's say. Mm. Um, and and I want to be gentle here. I don't want to you know. Um, beat up the Filipinos, um, but it's a, it's a different work culture. And, and um, in Canada, um, we found it a lot easier to motivate our workers, you know, through bonuses, okay. through incentives. Um, here, most workers, as long as they get their 400, 500 pesos mm -hmm. a day, money for their, for, their, uh, for their food and send a little bit of money home, that's their, their only incentive for working. So there, there, it, it, there's a lack of motivation to um, to get ahead, mm -hmm. um, to um, you know rise to the top of the barrel of, of to be competitive. Um, to, you can say. Yeah, and if you don't supervise, you're beat before you start. The right. Supervision here is everything. I'm seeing. And, and and that means um, you know day to day supervision. Daily, have to be daily, daily supervision. Now, the problem when running a business, of course, um, once we started um, achieving some success, um, the company grew, mm -hmm. and you know it was easy to 
um, maintain personal supervision when I was just supervising one, two, three jobs. Right, right. At any given time, we could be doing 15, 20 jobs now. Right. That's beyond my capability mm -hmm. to personally supervise. If, if you're somebody that's coming here and you want to build yourself, um, fine, you're just building one house, supervise it properly, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, you're there every day. Um, the, the chances of you getting a good outcome yeah. are, um, are increased dramatically. If you're coming here to get into the construction business, um, be ready for a shock when it comes to that and how to adapt to that, that problem of the need for supervision of mm -hmm. your workforce. Yeah. And how we've adapted to that mm -hmm. is, um, you know, through trial and error. And we're always actively looking for those Filipinos that are above and beyond the normal, normal worker. And over the years, you know, we certainly found some and grown with those. Okay. But then the next problem becomes as soon as they get too good, they go on their own. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's a never, never ending battle to keep people coming up in the ranks mm -hmm. that can fill those supervisory positions. Mm -hmm. Challenge number two would yeah. be materials. Back in the West, you can walk into any of the um, Home Depots, um, okay, you see. know, the, you the big that. box stores, uh, you, and, and you get anything you want mm. and more here. It's just not like that, and especially in a small market town like Dumaguete. Mm. Cebu and Manila are too bad, Dumaguete is terrible. Okay. Um, and, and so, the, the lack of um, material choices is, is a challenge. Uh, I'll just bring up something like glass. Um, most Westerners are used to having double or triple pane uh, thermal pane, uh, double glazed thermal pane. Um, here you can't get that. Um, oh, yeah. You just cannot get that. Everything that is all the special order that comes out of China. Okay. And so you just can't get that type of stuff. Westerners that are coming to build here have to keep in mind that what they are used to in terms of quality of some materials mm -hmm. just isn't available here. So those are the two big challenges. One is the work, work um, the work culture, and number two is materials. Mm -hmm. Are you like able to, for example, there is someone that really like wants the, the specific materials and then that you have to go and get into China or import it? Was there any uh, incident like that? I mean, Instances like that. Yes, and now I avoid it. Um, <laughs> as much as possible. Yeah. Um, and you have to offer what you have. Exactly. Yeah, okay. um, because we did do that, and um, we went through China, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, and, and and even clients have said that, oh, it's all right, I'll get it imported. And, and um, everything ends up getting stuck at customs. Oh, and and by the time you get it out of customs, it's three times what you thought it was going to cost you. Okay. And, and all sorts of delays. So unless you're an importer and okay. you do it every day, um, do not try to import materials. Okay. I will not be in that business. Um, it, yeah. The customs, customs department is just... Um, too difficult to deal mm, with. Okay. Yeah, because I know some people that are like, when they come here, I, I want to bring my own stuff. I want to bring my own building materials here. So is it possible like that? So good luck. <laughs> yeah, good luck. And, and, and we have faced that mm. with, with clients that, um, you know, they, they say, oh, I talk to somebody and it's no problem, whatever. And a lot of times they end up abandoning what they were sending at, mm. at, at customs. And uh, yeah. they have not had or heard of too many good experiences in that mm. regard, mm. except for people that they import on a day to day basis. Thank you for that. You're welcome. This is very, how to say, um, really very refreshing for, especially for those people that are still planning to come here. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a, it's a big thing to be able to get to know that, the challenge. When it comes to like cost of construction, or just, let's just say, let's focus on the house itself, like mm -hmm. ex excluding the lot. Mm -hmm. How much do they like if they need to like invest or have a capital or at least the minimum and the maximum that they can um, 
cost, the, the, the minimum maximum cost so that they can, they'll be able to build here <coughs> with the quality yeah. of, of house that you are doing. I think I'd like to first start out um, by explaining one issue we have in the construction industry here. Mm -hmm. There are a, a lot of people inquire and they want to know what is the square meter price to build and, mm -hmm. and they um, they will go around to a bunch of different companies and, and ask a bunch of different people and people mm -hmm. will come up oh it's a square meter price. We don't quote give prices per square meter. Okay. Um, I think that's a good point. There is just there's so many variables involved that that you don't know that thing that you don't know your price until you have a full set of working drawings mm -hmm. to work from. That means architectural, structural plumbing, electrical, mechanical. That is the only proper way to price a job um, with any accuracy. We've seen with foreigners, somebody told them they can get a house built for 20,000 20, pesos per square meter. Mm -hmm. And they will go to um, one of the one of these, um, the trike driver's brother, or you know, yeah. who build the house up in the mountains. And, mm -hmm say I want you to build a house for me for 20,000 pesos per square meter and mm. they'll know I'm they'll say yes sir yes sir um, and you know you'll give them a deposit you'll give them money each week because they don't have the money in the bank to finance the bill okay. um, and as soon as the problems start where they realize that 20,000 pesos per square meter is not enough to build the house the client wanted mm. um, they're gone it's as simple as that, and and um, and it's not necessarily because they are untrustworthy or dishonest. Mm -hmm. They just don't have the financial backing to get through the mistakes that they made. Right. And one of the mistakes um, that is commonly made here is improper estimates. Okay. And the way to avoid that is to do a line by line item estimate based on very very detailed working construction oh, wow. drawing drawing. Okay. And I reiterated if you do not have your architectural, structural, plumbing, mechanical or electrical mm -hmm. drawings, um, the contractor cannot price that properly. Okay. You will be throwing a number on it and that will be either a low number um, which will cause problems to the owners later on mm -hmm. um, or it will be a price that's high that so, uh, so that the guy's protecting himself. Okay. So number one is um, um, get a price based on full set of working drawings. Okay. So that's number one. That's what we insist upon. Mm -hmm. We will give somebody some rough ideas of budget, mm -hmm. which, which I will give you now. Yeah. But um, I will never commit to something until I see a full set of okay. construction drawings. Mm -hmm. Really, costs. Um, and I'm doing this, as I say, we've built probably a hundred or more homes. Um, so we have a good idea what our costs are. Mm -hmm. um, now we, we operate a business, we have overhead, we have architects and engineers here, we pay rent, um, we have insurance, we have licenses. Um, so our overhead will be more than some of the, some of the guys that work out in the back of their truck. And, and there are some good ones. Mm -hmm. Um, so we have to include our overhead costs in that and, and what a client will get with that is when there are problems and I say when because there is always a problem whether it's us or Ed, there, mm -hmm. we will always have problems, mm -hmm. there will always be challenges. Um, what you get with a, a company like us and there's other companies like us around is that if there are challenges we are able um, financially to work through them right. and reputationally mm -hmm. um, we want to be in business we want to continue to be in business so we have to honor our contractual obligations whereas somebody again that is working over the back of his truck mm -hmm. he's not might not feel that same motivation to mm -hmm. to work through the challenges right so costs um, typically and, and I, I'll speak from a contractor point of view, a reputable contractor with an office, with all those things that I've explained. Mm -hmm. um, one, one story house 
um, built to Western standards and 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 an upper mid grade finish, and that's basically yeah. what our baseline will be. Okay. So a one story house will probably run in the neighborhood of, of twenty seven thousand to about thirty five thousand pesos per square meter. Per square meter. Okay. Um, a two story house you have to add ten percent, fifteen percent on top of that because okay. you are. Um, you are increasing all your structure, structural aspects, your footings, mm. your um, your columns, your beams, everything is, is beefed up to handle the, the structural needs of a two-story home. Um, so you're talking for a two-story home probably in the, the 30 to, to 30, 37, 38,000 patients per square meter. Okay. Um, now there are a few things that you need to consider mm -hmm. the smaller size of a house, the higher price per square, square meter. I see, okay. Because you'll still have a kitchen, you'll still have your mm -hmm. electrical service property. There, there's just so many things. Um, if you take a house that's 100 square meters and a house that's 200 square meters, right. um, there's things, costs that are will be the same for a 100 square meter house or a 200 square meter house. Uh -huh. You're just dividing it by less square meters okay. so your price per square meter will go up okay. the smaller the house mm -hmm. um the complexity of the design mm -hmm. you know if it's a very very simple house you'll be at the low end of those that budget range mm -hmm. if it's a, a more complicated build then of course you'll be at the higher end of that mm -hmm. that range for those do it yourself first, um, or those guys that are going to get the truck driver's brother, or the okay. Terry Terry story, all the owners. Anyone they know. Yeah. Um, what you can save on that is basically um, some for labor. Our labor is not as efficient as the guy that's doing it for himself on, on his own house. So you'll save a little bit on labor, or you, you could save. A little bit on labor uh, and of course you'll save on the markup you know and our typical markup is 10% uh, 10%, 10%. Okay. so um, you can save um, potentially maybe 20 25% mm -hmm. if you do it yourself and um, but there's some caveats to that the buts, I yeah. want to hear them. <laughs> um, the the pain and aggravation get ready for it you know <laughs> yeah. if you're somebody that can can adapt and um not have a, a stroke or a heart attack and <laughs> um then um then go for it um, mm -hmm. but get ready for a daily thing for you know nine months to a year mm -hmm. of pain every day if that's how you want to spend your retirement <laughs> go for it um Sometimes I, I laughingly, laughingly um, joke that you know what you're paying me for is, is all that stress and aggravation. And let's face it, for all that stress and aggravation, I expect to make some money. And, and um, if you want to take the stress and aggravation, um, great. But don't don't think that you're not going to um, have that. You will. You will have that. Mm -hmm. um, the um and the other thing is if you you hire one of the less established maybe that's a better term maybe a less, yeah. less established <laughs> um, building contractors um you run it into the risks of can they finish the job for the price that they said they finished the job yes. are they, they they quoted you to begin the job um there are some that can and have, and there's many, many more that have not. Mm -hmm. And um, that 20,000 pesos per square meter um, that you started and thought you were going to build for ends up being 35,000 pesos per square meter by the time you're done. And either you pay it or you don't get your house finished. It's simple as that. And the pr problem with that is that. Um, Let's face it, most of our clients that are coming here and, and wanting to build a house, um, they're at the re retirement stage and they, mm -hmm. have a, they have a set budget. Mm -hmm. um, and if your budget to build a house is six million pesos, 
and it comes in at seven million pesos, you just may not have enough money mm -hmm. to comfortably finish that job without mm -hmm. affecting the quality of life, your life, and the rest of your mm -hmm. days on earth here. Um, mm -hmm. It's not where we are building for people that are in their 30s or 40s. Right that are still working and okay it's gone over budget but I can make that up because I'm still working. Mm -hmm. um, you're retired, this is your budget. If you go over that budget then then uh, we see people have problems with that. Mm. And also I think I would also like to stress the kind of materials that you're using because you see if they choose the less established one, right? And the house is going to be broken after a few years. <laughs> so I would also like to yeah. to emphasize that, I guess, on your part. And that's a hard one because um, the building methods here are pretty simple in mm -hmm. the Philippines. Um, and um, when we're talking structural, mm -hmm. um, that's even the less established contractors will probably not have a problem with that. Um, they, at this point in time, they know what they're doing when it comes to that. Okay. They should. Um, not saying all of them do, but, but the the structural aspect, to see the walls and, and, and things like that, okay. um, that's pretty easy for them to I do. Um, where do you find the problems are in the finishing, the tiling, mm -hmm. the cabinet work? Um, that is where um, you really see the difference between a quality contractor and um, somebody that is you're just not that experienced or not as experienced or motivated by the client. And when I say that, um, mm -hmm. again, it's not to say that they're dishonorable people or they're dishonest or they're not good tradesmen. Of course. Um, one of the, the issues is um, if you have clients that are coming from overseas mm -hmm. and when I say coming from overseas I'm referring also to um, one of our big markets which is overseas Filipino workers oh, coming yes, by, right. by mm -hmm. they expect a certain level of finishing mm -hmm. that um, that a lot of contractors here just don't know Mm -hmm. and they just don't have the experience in doing right. that type of work, right. that quality of work. What a what a Westerner or something that lived most of their life in, in the West um, will expect. So it's not that they don't want to give that mm -hmm. quality. They just don't, they just know, don't know what a, um, a person from the West expects. Right. So there, there's a, a, an inexperience in being able to provide the, to the expectations of those type of clients. And again, I stress, we're, we're one contractor. I can name you half a dozen contractors that do have our experience and can provide that. Mm -hmm. So I'm not just here selling us. Um, there are those people here, um, and then there's a lot that aren't like that. Okay, yeah. That's a really, really good point. Yeah. So, Any other questions for me? <laughs> My last question is, why are you here in the Philippines, specifically in the Maguete? As aside from the one that okay. you have, but why you chose the Maguete? Because we have like a lot of islands here, right? Yes. But tell them why the Maguete? Why do we get <laughs> all the places are islands? Halloween the woman. <laughs> <laughs> and that's pure and simple. Um, uh, most, most, um, be straightforward, most of us foreign men are here. Um, because we met and mm. fell in love with a Filipina, and yeah. um, and Filipinas tend to want to be close to their families. Right. And um, <coughs> excuse me, I started off on a small island called Caribou Island, which is near Boracay, uh -huh. and I loved it. it. Was my tropical paradise. Um, yeah. And um, but after six months or so. Um, I got the phone call from Shirley's brother saying, when are you bringing <laughs> mama's daughter home and, and, and doing the right thing? And, um, and so we ended up in Dumaguete for that reason. And, and I'll be honest with you, it was not, I, I wasn't overly 
um, impressed with it when I first got here 10 years ago. Okay. Um, but it grew on me. Mm -hmm. And it grew on me and it grew on me. And um, what I like about Dumaguete is it's a small city feel. Right. Um, and you can go in any direction and you're at 10 minutes and you're out of town into some amazing places in Talwin, Valencia. Right. Um, you know, just so many beautiful places that you can have good experiences at tropical um, paradise beauty is there mm -hmm. um, but you have all the amenities you really really need here mm -hmm. there's good shopping malls um, you know there's decent medical care here we've got several decent hospitals mm -hmm. now um, there's restaurants you know so there's schools if you have kids or yeah. some decent school so um, it, it's really, really a good mix between um, having the amenities that I expect for a comfortable life, but not being in a place where I have to spend three hours every day in traffic. Right. Um, so it's, it's a good, good balance between the two. Mm -hmm. um, as I stated earlier in the interview, um, I have no desire to move back to Canada. Mm -hmm. um, I like the Philippines and I like Dumaguete. And, um, you know, I'll probably be here, unless the Filipinos kick me out, I'll probably <laughs> be here, you know, till the day I die. That, that is really cool. That's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, thank you so You're much, Gore. Thank you so much for sharing. You're very welcome. Yes. Thank okay. you. Thanks, Leah. Bye, guys. <laughs>